This coming Monday, we celebrate Columbus Day in the United States. I think that this is a cause for mourning in many forms. Columbus Day was created in 1934. It was signed into law by Franklin D. Roosevelt after he'd been heavily lobbied by the Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus are a fraternal organization that was formed in the 1880s, which was a period of intense discrimination against Catholics. In elementary school, I was taught that Columbus was to be celebrated. He bravely crossed the Atlantic and discovered the New World. The reality, which you may know, is far worse. When Columbus got to Hispaniola, which is the island that uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic currently occupy, he immediately enslaved the indigenous people there and put them to work in his gold mines. Uh, within two years, half the population was dead from either overwork or execution. Terrible. Now, that's the first thing that I mourn. I mourn that my education system lied to me about the true nature of Columbus, and also that that, educa that same education system completely excluded the voices of the native peoples from, the, from that history. Just wrote them right out of it. There's a lot to mourn. So Columbus, the question is, was Columbus just a, acting on his own? Uh, you know, was he just a rogue genocidal maniac who happened to lead an expedition to the New World? Well, the fact of the matter is that Columbus, Columbus was a product of his times. Fifty years before, Pope Nicholas V issued a papal decree, a papal bull, a kind of decree, laying out this thing called the Doctrine of Christian Discovery. The Doctrine of Christian Discovery, let me explain, essentially it directs Christian nations to capture, vanquish, and subdue the Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, to put them into perpetual slavery, and to take all their possessions and property. In other words, the Pope said, was saying that God says that if you are white and European and Christian, you have dominion over all other peoples, and you can treat them any way you want. That's really disturbing. Moreover, this doctrine made its way into the legal precedents that we use in the law in this country, in, in America. Uh, for example, in 1823, the doctrine of discovery was used by the Supreme Court to invalidate previous treaties that gave sovereignty to the native peoples. Now, that's bad, but what's even worse is that unlike other bad legal precedents like not letting women vote or slavery, this doctrine, this legal precedent is still in use. It's never been overturned. In fact, it's been used as recently as 2010. It's very disturbing. And this is the kind of thing when, uh, that makes some people uncomfortable with religion. And it's true, I think, when, when people use religion to oppress or exploit other people, that is the opposite of what is true and what is actually holy. But we also need to remember that religion is a really important source for many people of comfort, of guidance, and inspiration. I know for myself, uh, as a Unitarian Universalist, my faith helps me heal some of the broken things in myself, especially around areas like racism. So how are we as religious people to react to Columbus Day? What are we to do with this, this idea? Well, I have some I have some ideas about that. First, I think there's more mourning called for. I mourn, of course, the, the oppression and violence that was the result of the doctrine of discovery. I also mourn that uh, the loss of idealism. I love America, but I have to acknowledge that, that this country I love also does things that are not just. And, 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 I, and I feel I respond to that with lamentation. While we mourn, I think we also have an obligation as religious people to educate ourselves. And a, and a good place to do that is to go to the Unitarian Universalist Association website, uua.org. And if you type in Doctrine of Discovery in the search bar, it brings up great materials, including some really nice short videos that lay out the history and issues around Doctrine of Discovery very nicely. So I recommend that. And in addition to educating ourselves and mourning, I also, we, should, we also need to align ourselves with communities that are still responding, still dealing with the, the impacts of the doctrine of discovery. And 
a, a good way to start with that, I think, is is to listen to, to to listen with both our hearts and our ears to what those communities have to tell us, what their stories are, and what they want from us. I think it's particularly important for people like me who are of European descent to come to this conversation with great humility. For example, there's a conversation going on about whether the football team that plays out of Washington, D.C. should be using the name they use. I do think there is hope, and there has been progress. I think, uh, you know, there are four states that don't observe Columbus Day currently, uh, Alaska, Hawaii, Oregon, and North Dakota. And also, in 2012, our Unitarian Universalist Association voted to rescind the doctrine, to repudiate the doctrine of discovery. I wish I could say that the Roman Catholic Church has done that too, but that's not the case. In 2008 and 2009, delegations of indigenous people approached Pope Benedict, asking him to repudiate the doctrine, and he declined. But perhaps Pope Francis will reconsider. Thank you for mourning with me. And, I, and again, thank you for letting me walk with you on this journey. <laughs>